NASA just canceled Dream Chaser's $1.4 billion ISS docking requirement. After seven delays since 2020, most see this as failure. But the real story is far different. Sierra Space created an entire defense division in June 2025 for one reason. The military space market is worth hundreds of billions annually. Dream Chaser's runway landing and 5,500 kilograms payload capacity make it perfect for classified missions. Capabilities China's space plane already has. This isn't a setback, it's a strategic pivot. Let's dive right in. September 25th, 2025, NASA and Sierra Space announced what mainstream media called a contract modification. But buried in that bureaucratic language was a seismic shift that changes everything we thought we knew about Dream Chaser's future. The headline everyone saw, Dream Chaser no longer required to dock with the ISS. Its first flight in late 2026 becomes a free flight demonstration. Most outlets frame this as failure. They're missing the bigger picture. Here's the critical detail most coverage ignores. That $1.4 billion contract? It's not what you think. This wasn't development funding like Boeing Starliner received. NASA didn't write Sierra Space a check up front. This is a fixed price service contract. Sierra Space only gets paid when they deliver cargo, return it safely, and hit specific milestones. No docking to the ISS, no cargo delivery, no payment. The numbers tell the real story. NASA contributed just $227 million through the commercial crew program years ago for early development. Everything else, the massive development costs, came from Sierra Space's own budget. Seven delays later, they've spent years in substantial capital without receiving a single dollar from this contract. Which raises the obvious question, if they're not getting paid, why aren't they in crisis mode? The answer reveals a strategy most analysts completely missed. Three months before this contract modification, something significant happened. June 2025, Sierra Space launched an entire new division called Sierra Space Defense. Not a side project, a full division with dedicated leadership and resources. CEO Tom Bachensi's statement at the time deserves a closer look. Dream Chaser represents the future of versatile space transportation and mission flexibility, addressing emerging threats and national security priorities as we accelerate our entry into the defense technology market. That's not corporate jargon. That's a roadmap. The economics explain everything. The U.S. defense space budget operates in the hundreds of billions annually. Unlike NASA's civilian programs bound by strict certification standards and fierce competition from SpaceX's Dragon, defense contracts offer different dynamics. Faster approval processes, flexibility for specialized missions, and substantially higher profit margins. Sierra Space faced a brutal calculation. Continue burning money waiting for ISS certification while the station approaches retirement in 2030 or pivot to a market desperately seeking their exact capabilities. They chose the path that ensures company survival while potentially delivering even greater returns. And the Pentagon is paying attention. But why would the military want a spacecraft that couldn't even meet NASA's timeline? This is where Dream Chaser's design becomes crucial. It's not just another cargo vessel competing with SpaceX. Its architecture, based on NASA's HL-20 lifting body concept, delivers capabilities that capsule-based systems fundamentally cannot match. Runway landing changes the game. Unlike Dragon or Cygnus that either splash into the ocean or burn up entirely, Dream Chaser has wings. It glides through the atmosphere and lands on conventional runways. Any major runway worldwide can serve as a recovery site. The operational advantage is staggering. After returning from orbit, Dream Chaser can be inspected, refurbished, and prepared for the next mission in one to two days instead of weeks. For military operations requiring rapid response, tracking adversary satellites, deploying emergency assets, or retrieving time-sensitive intelligence, this turnaround speed is invaluable. Payload capacity expands mission options. Dream Chaser carries 5,500 kilograms to low Earth orbit and returns the same mass to Earth. That's enough for multiple reconnaissance satellites, experimental defense systems, or classified payloads. More importantly, it brings everything back intact. Compare this to ocean splashdowns. 
Capsules hit the water at high speed, exposing payloads to impact forces and saltwater contamination. Sensitive equipment, advanced optics, quantum communication devices, biological experiments often suffers damage. Dream Chaser's gentle runway landing eliminates these risks entirely. Low G reentry protects critical assets. This technical detail matters more than most realize. Dream Chaser's lifting body design means it experiences only 1.5 Gs during reentry. Traditional capsules endure 4 to 5 Gs or higher. For delicate scientific instruments or classified technology that must return for analysis, this gentler re-entry profile opens mission possibilities that expendable or high-G vehicles simply cannot support. Sierra Space claims over 50% cost reduction compared to expendable vehicles across a mission lifecycle. For a defense establishment spending billions on single-use satellites and systems, Dream Chaser offers repeatable capability at a fraction of traditional costs. These aren't theoretical advantages. They're exactly what modern military space operations demand. Which brings us to an important comparison the media is overlooking. The U.S. Space Force already operates Boeing's X-37B space plane, unmanned, reusable, capable of classified missions lasting years. Six successful flights since 2010, with a seventh recently launched. The X-37B proved reusable space planes work for military applications. So why would the Pentagon need Dream Chaser? The answer lies in capabilities and scale. The X-37B measures 8.8 .8 meters with a payload bay under one metric ton. Dream Chaser, nine meters with a 5.5 metric ton capacity. That's five times the payload volume. This difference is crucial for the Space Development Agency's proliferated warfighter space architecture. Rapidly deploying satellite constellations for military communications, reconnaissance, and threat detection. Think of it this way. The X-37B excels at precision missions requiring long orbital stays and secrecy. Dream Chaser is built for volume and versatility, deploying multiple satellites, conducting various experiments, or carrying diverse payloads in a single flight. But we need to be honest about Dream Chaser's current disadvantage. The X-37B has proven flight heritage. It's operational, reliable, and trusted. Dream Chaser has zero flights. Until it proves itself in space, it remains unproven technology. Launch costs also tell an interesting story. The X-37B flew on Atlas V rockets, costing $150 to $180 million. Dream Chaser requires ULA's new Vulcan Centaur at $120 to $200 million per launch. Roughly comparable, though Vulcan itself is still establishing its track record. The real question, can Sierra Space demonstrate Dream Chaser's value before military planners lose patience? And there's another factor driving urgency, one that keeps Pentagon strategists awake at night. China has successfully flown its own reusable space plane multiple times. Exact details remain classified by Beijing, but Western intelligence analysts believe it operates similarly to the X-37B, capable of extended orbital missions, satellite deployment, and atmospheric re-entry. Russia has announced similar development programs, though they lag significantly behind both the U.S. and China in actual capability. Here's what matters. The next phase of space competition isn't about who plants flags on the moon or reaches Mars first. It's about who dominates reusable orbital platforms. These vehicles can rapidly deploy satellites, inspect or interfere with adversary spacecraft, test new technologies, and return with intelligence, all while maintaining operational flexibility impossible with traditional launch systems. America's technological lead is narrowing. The X-37B remains a classified Air Force asset with limited payload capacity. Dream Chaser, developed under NASA's public-private partnership model, could provide the scalable military space plane capability that current geopolitical competition demands. If Sierra Space delivers, they won't merely recover from the ISS setback. They'll position Dream Chaser as a cornerstone of U.S. orbital strategy for the next decade. The stakes extend far beyond one company's business model. Every reusable spacecraft faces one make-or-break challenge. Surviving re-entry. Temperatures exceed 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit as the vehicle slams in Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds. 
The thermal protection system is literally the difference between success and catastrophic failure. Both Dream Chaser and the X-37B use NASA's TUFI technology, toughened unipiece fibrous insulation. This lightweight silica fiber composite withstands extreme heat while remaining reusable across multiple missions. A carbon-infused outer cap resists oxidation during the searing re-entry environment. The X-37B applies TUFI strategically to leading edges in the nose, areas experiencing the highest heat loads. This approach prioritizes durability for long-duration military missions. It works brilliantly for the X-37B's specialized role. Though the system was never designed for mass production or broad mission flexibility, Dream Chaser takes a more comprehensive approach. Built from day one to meet NASA's stringent human spaceflight safety standards, it incorporates more extensive thermal protection coverage. This makes the vehicle heavier and more complex, driving up development costs and timeline. But there's method to this approach. By meeting NASA's rigorous requirements, Sierra Space built a platform adaptable to diverse mission profiles, civilian cargo, military reconnaissance, potential crew transport, those human rating standards that cause delays and cost overruns, they might now become Dream Chaser's greatest asset as military contracts demand reliability and versatility. The gamble, spend more up front for long-term flexibility. Late 2026 will reveal whether that bet pays off. Let's address the uncomfortable truth. The International Space Station has roughly five years before planned decommissioning in 2030. NASA desperately needed Dream Chaser's cargo services years ago when SpaceX and Northrop Grumman were the only operational providers. Seven delays meant that backup plan never materialized. By late 2026, when Dream Chaser finally flies, the station's end is already visible on the horizon. Future commercial stations like Orbital Reef and Axiom remain years away from operation. NASA made the pragmatic decision Release Sierra Space from ISS docking requirements. Let them prove the technology through a free flight demonstration with minimal NASA support and cost. If Dream Chaser succeeds, excellent. It might serve as future stations or other missions. If it fails, NASA hasn't compounded losses on a dying program. For Sierra Space, this failure narrative completely misses reality. They're no longer locked into a program with limited lifespan and fixed payments. They're free to pursue defense contracts offering higher value without NASA's bureaucratic oversight and rigorous certification process. The timing works in their favor. The military space market is expanding rapidly, and Dream Chaser's unique capabilities align precisely with Pentagon priorities. What looks like failure to the ISS community might be the smartest strategic pivot in aerospace business this decade. The financial incentives tell us where this is really headed. NASA's CRS-2 contract required seven Dream Chaser flights, fixed price, milestone-based payments. Sierra Space absorbed all development risk and cost overruns. After years of delays and mounting expenses without receiving contract payments, continuing the ISS path meant gambling on an uncertain and limited payoff before station retirement. Defense contracts operate differently. The Pentagon funds capability development. Cost plus contracts are common in classified programs. Security classification provides budget flexibility away from public scrutiny. For a company that's invested heavily without returns, pivoting to defense isn't just smart business. It's survival dressed in national security priorities. Tom Vicenzi's statement about accelerated entry into the defense technology market wasn't aspirational. It was announcing a fundamental business strategy shift that changes Dream Chaser's entire value proposition. Sierra Space looked at their financial reality, the ISS timeline, defense budget growth, and military space requirements. They made the only rational choice that keeps the company viable while positioning Dream Chaser, where it might deliver the greatest value. Late 2026 approaches, Dream Chaser will launch aboard Vulcan Centaur for its maiden flight. No ISS docking, no cargo delivery mission, just a comprehensive demonstration proving the vehicle performs as designed. If successful, Sierra Space unlocks defense contract opportunities potentially dwarfing NASA's $1.4 billion. If the mission fails, a decade of development and billions in investment face serious questions. The pressure is immense. China's space plane continues classified missions. 
The X-37B operates with proven reliability. Commercial space stations remain in development, and Dream Chaser sits at Kennedy Space Center, representing either vindication or cautionary tale. But here's what's becoming clear. This isn't the end of Dream Chaser's story. The ISS chapter may be closing, but a potentially larger one is opening. NASA's mini-shuttle is transforming into a military asset. Civilian cargo missions are giving way to classified national security operations. A program dismissed as delayed and failing might become America's answer to orbital competition. The real question isn't whether Dream Chaser will fly, it's whether it flies successfully enough and soon enough to capture the military contracts that now represent its primary future. Everything rides on late 2026. Here's the bottom line. Dream Chaser's pivot from ISS to military isn't failure. It's survival strategy that could reshape American space dominance. Sierra Space saw what others missed. The ISS has five years left, but defense contracts worth hundreds of billions are available right now. Late 2026 decides everything. If Dream Chaser's demonstration succeeds, it unlocks military missions that capsules can't touch. Rapid deployment, runway landings, and reusable operations that match China's space plane capabilities. If it fails, a decade of work and billions invested vanish. But this is just the beginning. Orbital Reef, Axiom Station, and expanding military space programs all need vehicles like Dream Chaser. The next two years will determine whether America maintains its edge in reusable space systems or watches competitors catch up. What's your take? Will Dream Chaser succeed as a military asset, or is this pivot too late? Drop your thoughts below. If this deep dive gave you a new perspective, hit that like button. This is Space Hub, where we analyze the stories behind the headlines. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our breakdown when Dream Chaser finally launches in 2026. The real space race is just heating up, and we'll be covering every move. Dream Chaser flies next year. We'll see if this gamble pays off.